Welcome back to my 25 days of Flutter series. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at common Flutter widgets. So here I just have a simple app. Our home page is just a stateless widget with a build method returning a scaffold widget. And the body of that is just a container. So we're gonna be using this basic class to add the common Flutter widgets. We already talked about widgets like the row, column, container, text, all that sort of stuff. So I'm not going to be talking about any of the widgets that we already touched on. The widgets we will be taking a look at are on the screen right up here. So the first one I want to look at is app bar. So the app bar is a property on the scaffold widget. We can set that like this app bar and that takes the app bar widget. As you can see, this app bar takes in a bunch of different properties. The first one, the most common one, is title. So that can be set to a text widget. We'll just say app bar title. Another common property is the elevation property, and that controls this elevation here. So the default is, I believe, 4.0, but if we change that to 12, you should see the elevation become more clear. And if we change it to 2, it becomes more subtle. Next, I want to take a look at the background color property. This takes in a color. So let's just say colors.red300. There we go. Simple enough. Next is the leading property, and this takes in an icon. So we can say icon, icons dot, and we'll just pick a random one. And that just puts in a leading icon on the left. So commonly you might want to put an icon button to open up a drawer or a back arrow, something like that. And we'll take a look at the icon widget and the icon button widget later on in this video. And then the last property I want to take a look at is the actions list. So this property takes in a list of icons or icon buttons. So we'll just say icon button, we'll give it a random icon, and we'll give it a on pressed event of null make sure to wrap this like that and then we can give it one more so we see the list coming through and as you can see there on the upper right and if we want to make the color clear we can just give this an empty function there we go so that's it for the app bar widget Next, we'll take a look at the icon. So inside of the container here, I'm just going to give it a child of a column so we can just pass in a bunch of widgets and play around with them. So the icon widget, as we saw, is declared like this. And then we can choose from all of these icons, and these are the standard cupuccino icons that come installed with Flutter, but you can also use third-party icon packages like Font Awesome icons if you want. We'll look at how to install those in the Flutter packages episode of this series. This also takes in a couple of properties. One of them is the color property. We can just change the color of the icon, so maybe we want to change it to blue. And as we can see, the icon is now changed. It also has a size property. And this is just a double that describes the size. So if we give it 30.0, it will become bigger. Now, similarly to the icon widget, we have the icon button widget. And this is similar, except it has a lot more properties. One of the most important one is the on press property. So if you use an icon button, you are allowing the user to press it and have something happen. So let's just set the icon like we've been doing to a random icon 
We can change the color if we want to. And then we need to include the on pressed event. And if I hover over this, you'll see that the parameter on pressed is required. So let's just hit quick fix and see what that does. We'll add it. There we go. So this is just an empty function, and now there are no more errors. And we can throw something in here like print I was pressed. And here is just to show that. Next we have the raised icon, or sorry, the raised button widget. And this is just a button that again takes in an unpressed event. So we'll give it an unpressed event of just an empty function like we've been doing. And then to give this some text, we can set the child to a text widget. And we can just say, click me. There we go. Now we see some text. Another property this takes is the color property. So we can change the background color. So we can say colors dot red or something like that. And then we can change the text color with the text color property. Maybe we want that to be white. And then we also have the elevation property. Next up, we have the sized box widget. This is a very useful widget for putting in some space between widgets. So we can declare it like this. And then as you see, it takes in four different properties. We're going to look at the height and the width. So I can say height set it to 10.0 and if I put this raise button below it as well and we look at what this looks like there is some space between now if I uncomment that the space is removed so that's a useful way to put space either height or width it can do width as well just like that next up is the image widget we can say image and we can say image and set that to network image. And this takes in a URL. So let me go grab an image. All right, so I got my image. Let me paste it in here. So this is actually from the Flutter 25 uh, website. And there we go. As you can see, the network image, we were able to grab the, UR the image at this URL and put it here. Another property this image takes is the fit property. And then we can pass in box fit. We have dot contain, cover, fill, fill height, fill width, or none. So you can play around with these and see how they affect the image. We also have the width. So you can declare a hard coded width, maybe 30.0. And we also have the same for height. All right, so we have two more widgets I wanna take a look at. The next one is the padding widget. So padding is a nice way to put space in between widgets or the end of the screen. So what we can do is, let me go up to this icon here, and I'm gonna wrap this with a container. So I'm gonna go up to this icon here, and I'm going to wrap it with a container and I'm doing this so I can define the background color so you can see exactly how much space this is taking up and it's pushed over to the side because of this image but that's okay so the padding widget you use it by wrapping it around the widget you want to add padding to so if I want to add padding to this icon I can wrap the padding widget right here around and then it takes in this parameter here padding and the default is edge insets dot all 8.0 as you can see that put eight pixels of padding around the entire icon I can define specific sides where I want the padding by doing from left top right bottom so this takes in four uh, property or four parameters the left padding which is 8.0 the top padding let's say 4.0 the right padding we'll say 3.0 and the bottom padding maybe we'll say 15.0 
And as you can see, the padding is now different for each of the four sides. And the final widget I want to take a look at is the list view widget. So for the list view widget, I'm going to actually comment out this column and I'm going to make the child a list view. There we go. And as you can see, this takes in a bunch of properties, but the one we want is children. So this acts uh, very similarly to the uh, column widget. So we can just pass in widgets in here. So let me just say text text one. And you should be able to see that come through. There we go at the top. And let me do this a couple more times. So now we have a list. But the difference is I can now drag this down. So you can see a list is forming. And if I paste this some more so it goes off the bottom, I can scroll just like that. And a lot of the times what you're going to have with a list view is you might have a list. So let's go up here and actually declare a list. So I'm just going to say var list, set that equal to item one, item two, and item three. So just a list of strings. What I can do is I can say children is equal to list, which is this list here, dot map, and I can map it to a a text um, a text widget, and then at the end I need to say dot to list, just like that, and that will actually map each of the items in this list to the list view. And we're going to see this feature a lot. And we're actually, instead of going, in, instead of mapping it to a single widget, you'll see soon how we can build custom widgets and then we can map it to a custom widget. But that's all for this video, guys. Just to recap, here are all of the widgets we went over. And in the next video, we are going to take a look at how we can use that to build layouts. And then after that, like I said, we'll take a look at how we can build custom widgets.